Hello and welcome to Guerrilla Discipleship. I'm Tim Parker, and today we're going to continue our discussion on the Disciple Makers Toolkit, which is a series on how to equip and empower and bold embolden you to be a disciple maker. It's more of a series on the how tos, and it is like an actual sermon or a message, but. That's kind of what Guerrilla Discipleship is all about anyways, is it's about uh, equipping you to be a disciple maker, not only to hear, not only to obey, but to share God's word with a multiplication mindset. So thank you for tuning in. As always, if you have comments or questions, you can post them below uh, in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we also have a Disciple Makers Toolkit you can check out. I believe the website is oakdale.church slash toolkit. If I'm wrong, it will say the actual <laughs> link down here below. You can download that and kind of follow along. This week we are in week five of not only a sermon series at our church, not only in Guerrilla Discipleship, but also this toolkit that you can download the PDF version. And it's all about how to have spiritual conversations. And the idea is that the toolkit that we have here in front of me, the message that we just preached, which you can also access, that might be in the comments or in the description below. And then this video all kind of work in circus and in circle together. They cover some of the similar things, but not all quite, because uh, we want to make sure we can uh, equip you in different directions. And so yesterday I preached a message on spiritual conversations. We had a panel uh, and just kind of got to hear how we could be a little bit more spiritually obvious and move conversations across the conversation quadrant not just from casual conversations, but to meaningful conversations, not just from meaningful conversations, but to spiritual conversations. And then also there's discovery questions, which we didn't get into. And it, and it went great. You can check it out. I didn't do very much preaching. It was all about just how do, we, how do we be more spiritually obvious? How do we direct and guide the conversation? And just some tips and tricks. This morning, or whenever you're watching this on demand, I'm recording it in the morning, so I guess you know my secrets now, uh, is going to be all about how to have spiritual conversations, but we're taking a slightly different turn. You see, after the message yesterday, I got some feedback from someone who said, yeah, that's all great and that's all good, but why don't we just, you know, use tracks? Why don't we just do the good old draw on a napkin and show people that they're a sinner? Why don't we just quote scripture at people and do, do it kind of the good old fashioned way? And uh, the, the, the answer to that question, you know, we try to answer that gracefully and lovingly and truthfully is, Yes, that is a method. That was a way many of us were trained or encouraged to do when we talked about evangelism. And honestly, you know, there is some results with it. I'm not sure of the exact results in our modern times, but I've heard, you know, success stories about that. But my, my question is, is, as we talk about that, is that something we want to lead with? Uh, maybe if this conversation goes spiritually, we can talk about, um, leading people to Christ and present an opportunity and, and offer them an invitation to follow. But I'm not always certain that that's the best way to lead with. Uh, and there's a couple different reasons for that. Uh, one, I think that we live in a very post-Christian culture. Uh, what I mean by that is maybe this strategy worked 60, 80, 100 years ago. I'm not sure when at least your average person in the United States knew a couple books of the Bible or when you said David and Goliath, they knew that was an actual story or uh, the story of Jonah or who Jesus was. They could tell you a little bit about it because uh, the culture, at least in the U.S., was predominantly at least default Christian. But living in a time now where we aren't just post-Christian, but maybe even post-post-Christian, especially if you live in a very uh, diverse and uh, town full of populated people, we're even moving farther from that. You can look up the definition of post-Christian if you'd like. Uh, I'm not sure that's the best way to start because you're trying to get people to uh, automatically adopt a new set of beliefs that are contrary to the culture or contrary to what they know, maybe completely foreign to them, especially if they're from a different country and never walked in a church, never even cracked open a Bible. You're trying to completely change the worldview with the click of a button or with a first uh, approach to them. And that's just kind of like radical. And yes, hear me out. It does happen. It can happen. But in a post-Christian culture, I think that building relationships uh, and listening to the Holy Spirit is the most important piece. Maybe you are talking to someone and God does invite you to share scripture with them. And maybe it is the last time they take a breath on this earth that we're not going to preach against that. If God tells you to, to do something, we want to encourage you to, to walk in obedience. But I think more times than not that you see people become followers of Christ, not by changing their mind, but by changing their actions. And part of being a disciple maker and having spiritual conversations, I think is all about encouraging people to just adopt a new action, not necessarily a new belief. Uh, and that's kind of one of the paradigms that we have as a disciple maker, or as you look at scripture or this disciple making movement concept that we talk so exhaustively about is that we don't, uh, 
we don't convert to disciple, we disciple to convert. I think I'm saying that right. Let me look at my notes. Yes, uh, the traditional approach of evangelism is convert, then disciple. However, the pattern of Jesus and the early church was to invite people to discover truth by following Jesus. And so that's kind of what I want to talk a little bit about today, is that when we have spiritual conversations, the goal is to say, hey, why don't you change this action? You know, why don't you just, <laughs> for me, prayer helps me feel less anxiety. Uh, why don't you, you sound like you have a lot of anxiety. Why don't you just try praying? Hey man, your life seems like you're really struggling right now. Is there anything I can do to pray for you? Hey, I, it sounds like there's a lot of bitterness in your life. Uh, you know, my faith informs me that we just got to forgive people. Can I help you? Or are you interested in, in, in learning how to forgive someone? And once people, I think, taste and see that the Lord is good, that's in scripture, right? Once you get that and start practicing it, people will say, wow, my life is better. Wow, prayer does work. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for leading me towards this better lifestyle. And so that's why I think we want to take with our conversations as we are trying to be spiritually obvious, as we're trying to not just be meaningful, but be spiritual in our conversations as we direct people to God, is to just get them to try an action, is to just talk about the actions of faith. We're never going to get people, well, maybe never, I was rarely going to get people to be able to just uh, take the scripture, hook, line, and sinker right from the get-go. Uh, like I said, there are rare situations where people are just ripe, where God has prepared them, where they've had a knowledge, where they, they know something, and you're just that last little um, piece of the puzzle. You're that last person that just comes before the fruit uh, uh, is, it comes out and don't, don't avoid those opportunities. Walk into them, walk in them boldly. But I want to encourage us that as we have these spiritual conversations to just uh, invite people to a step in a, of action first. Uh, and that's what we can do because I think that's what will, will work better. And I know this might seem like it's uh, a softer or more gentle approach, but I think in our culture, I think in our time, and I think with our giftings, there might be someone who's listening right now who's like, I got the gift of evangelism. I've led 100 people to Christ. I have no problem with tracks. If that's you, if that's your calling and it's working and it's effective and you're seeing hundreds of people come to faith, please don't stop. But if you're someone who's like the rest of us who are like, man, I might be outgoing, uh, but I might be an introvert and I'm not sure even how to talk about my faith. I'm not sure how to even shift a conversation to be spiritual. I'm not sure how to even bring something back up again that someone once brought up again. Uh, we encourage you to follow this kind of disciple making process where you have what I call continued intentional relation, relational development. It's not a phrase I've coined, but it's something that I will, I will continue to, to bang the drum on over and over and over again is that we need to continue to have intentional relationship building with people uh, over time. It's not just these one-off conversations with waiters or waitresses, although God can work there too. It's not just the one-offs with someone in the line. The, where, the, the ways that we can have the bigger impact is the people that we normally rub elbows with, our acquaintances, our coworkers, where we just continue to build that bridge, continue to walk across that bridge, continue to be not just casual, but have meaningful relationships. And the more we build that relational equity, the easier it is to have spiritual conversations because you know them, they know you. And by introducing some spiritual concept like, I wonder what God thinks about that, or how does your faith or your understanding of God or your understanding of, of spirituality inform your decision, then you are able to kind of endure some of the challenging conversations or some of the sticky things. You're able to, even if there's friction in the conversation, your relationship won't end. And in fact, that friction might actually cause your relationship to grow tighter uh, and actually make them more curious about who you are or who you follow. And they'll follow you as you follow Christ. And so we want to encourage you to continue to have those relationships with people continue to walk with them uh, and continue to, to restart conversations that maybe you haven't had in a week or a month or two with friends who've maybe leaned in the spiritual places or you've talked about prayer and then begin talk, talking about, hey, I prayed for you last month. Uh, you asked for prayer for this. How is that going in your life? And just continue to be present, continue to plant the seeds, continue to water them. Uh, the analogy I like to say is, you know, you can knock on the door, but you don't have, uh, and if they open it, you can walk through it, but don't just keep knocking if they don't answer the door. Continue to be their friend, continue to love on them, but we believe that God wants and desires for us to be people who not only share the good news, but share life and share personalities and share our hobbies and share our details and lead with vulnerability for the sake that God can work through our weakness and can multiply that out. So we just want to encourage you to, to be a disciple maker and to have spiritual conversations as difficult as they are in the toolkit that you've downloaded, or maybe you have a hard copy. I believe on page 31, there's a list of great questions. We want to encourage you to pray over those questions. Some of you are like, well, I can use those questions, but I don't know who I'm going to talk to. I think we talked a little bit about this last week. I'll remind you again. You can actually download an app called Pray Day. 
Uh, the link will probably be like here, or maybe the QR code could be somewhere over here. <laughs> I don't know exactly <laughs> where it's going to be. Uh, it's an app that can actually have a prayer calendar where you can pray for people. And you can actually pray for them. And then if you're going to see them that day, the app will actually remind you to pray for them on a kind of random basis, depending on how you fill it out. Uh, you can actually use that app and pray for the people, pray that God will work. You can, you know, till the soil with the power of prayer. And then you can read over those conversations, read over those questions the day before you go talk to them. So say you're meeting up with a friend at, uh, at a coffee shop later in the day, or you're going to go meet up with a coworker and have a meeting or get a lunch, or you're seeing a family member coming for Memorial Day weekend. You can actually start reading over those questions and say, God, help me to use one of these questions. Uh, one of the tips I do, and I know many of you think I'm like this super bubbly, outgoing guy who never struggles with being spiritually obvious, and uh, you'd be wrong on that part. I still struggle with it. I'm by far, I'm not anywhere where I like to be or where I believe God wants me to be. Uh, just full disclosure with that. Uh, I actually will pray over the people I know I'm going to meet that day or the people I might meet that day or the people I think I'm going to rub elbows with and actually kind of like rehearse in my mind how a potential conversation could or would go so that I could maybe try to figure out how I could uh, veer a conversation into being spiritually obvious. Just I encourage you not to like force it. Don't make it happen. Don't... Uh, don't feel like you have to close the deal at any time, but know that if God does offer an opportunity, we do need to give a reason for our faith. But just continue, to, I think, prayer on a daily basis, maybe even a weekly basis, uh, and just praying over questions and, and just being more intentional about being spiritually obvious and shifting conversations, conversations to um, being spiritual is exactly what God's call us to do. And so, uh, yeah, that's your challenge. We hope you do that. Stay tuned. We have week six coming up next week. Uh, hopefully there'll be some awesome good stuff. I believe Pastor Kevin will be back with me again. Uh, as always, if you have questions or comments, post them below. You can email me, tparker at oakdale.church. And we want to help you. We want to equip you to be a disciple maker where you live, learn, work, and play. So uh, don't delay. <laughs> Start now. We are hoping that these messages and that these videos are just something that just sparks you and can ignite disciple making in your life. Have a great day. God bless.